Hello everyone and welcome to Grace Community Church. My name is Dave White and we're coming to the last in our series on the letter of 1 Peter, coming to the last section. So I'm so glad you could join us for this. And Peter, as we know, has been writing to these Christians who were mainly living in what is now modern day Turkey, believers who were born again, saved, forgiven, blessed, but also under pressure and meeting many challenges in their daily lives. And this last section is largely about standing firm and resisting those pressures, as Peter sums up and concludes, as it were. So let me right at the beginning read to you from 1 Peter chapter 5, and I'm going to begin at verse 5. Clothe yourselves, all of you, with humility towards one another, for God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that at the proper time he may exalt you, casting all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. Be sober-minded, be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion seeking someone to devour. Resist him, firm in your faith, knowing that the same kinds of suffering are being experienced by your brotherhood throughout the world. And after you have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, confirm, strengthen and establish you. To him be the dominion for ever and ever. Amen. By Silvanus, a faithful brother as I regard him, I have written briefly to you, exhorting and declaring that this is the true grace of God. Stand firm in it. She who is at Babylon, who is likewise chosen, sends you greetings. And so does Mark, my son, greet one another with a kiss of love. Peace to all who are in Christ. Wonderful passage. And uh, as an example of one of the ideas here, think for a minute of one of the great advances of medicine that occurred when researchers discovered how the terrible malaria disease was being spread. Treating the disease had been hopeless. It just seemed to keep on spreading from person to person, from place to place, until one day someone realised that it was actually the tiny mosquito, millions of them in fact, that was spreading and carrying the illness this way and that. And once that was realised, they could then start taking steps to drain swamps, to protect humans with netting so that they could sleep at night without being bitten, and so on, and find ways of dealing with those tiny insects. Now malaria is still a problem of course, but far less so. Now we know what's causing it and have some solutions to hand. And it's the same for us as Christians. When we're fighting our battles, come under pressure and face challenges, if we know who the enemy is and have some solutions to hand, it helps us enormously resist and stand firm in our faith. So what are the challenges and issues spoken about and hinted at in this letter from Peter? What were the early Christians facing? Well, to differing degrees, just the same sort of things that we face as Christians in the 20th, 21st century today. They were scattered. They could not all meet or be together in one place. Some were in quite isolated situations. That's very relevant to our situation today, isn't it? And there was suffering and persecution, various trials and tests, some of them described as fiery. That covers everything from minor irritations to threats of imprisonment and death. And many of our brothers and sisters around the world face such things even today. But what's talked about in this letter is all types of trials, whether they are major uh, uh, situations of persecution or whether the minor frustrations and irritations of daily life. Of course, that meant there was the potential for fear and panic amongst them. And I'm sure at times doubts arose in their hearts. Does God know? Is Jesus with us? Where is the power of the Holy Spirit? And as always, when pressure comes, there was the possibility of disunity and division among them. These are all things we can face nowadays in similar ways to different degrees. But my question is, where does all this come from? Who or what is behind all this? It's all too easy to complain about situations and 
our lack of money or moan about the government or argue with our boss or grumble with others, generally think we know best, to think others or the system are against us. But finally, Peter in this letter clearly states who is the real enemy, the enemy behind all this. Like the mosquito, the enemy is seriously dangerous and also, like in the case of malaria, once we, you realise who the enemy is, you stand a chance of defeating it. And of course, the enemy referred to in this passage is the devil. Verse 8 says, Be alert and of sober mind. Your devil, your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Now that picture is potentially quite alarming, isn't it, of a stalking, prowling lion ready to gulp down its prey. But please, please note the little word like. The enemy is like a lion, not actually a lion. The devil is dangerous, does have some power, but is not the king of kings. He's not the lord of lords and he has been defeated. Remember, it's Jesus who is the one who is described in Revelation chapter 5 verse 5 as not as like, but just the lion of the tribe of Judah. He is truly the king of kings and lord of lords. Jesus is the one with the real power, not the devil. Yes, the devil is real, but not all powerful. He is the one who is ultimately behind the suffering, the evil, the wrong things of this world. People and systems and viruses are influenced and stirred up by the devil, but it's not people and governments or others who are the real enemy. And the devil has been defeated by Jesus on the cross and can be defeated by in daily life by believers in Jesus, by Christians of faith, by those who are full of the Holy Spirit. Now Peter knew all about the attacks and challenges of life. He had himself faced suffering and persecution. For example, when he was thrown into prison in Acts chapter 12, after his friend James had been beheaded, I guess he probably thought he was going to be next, but God rescued him. He'd faced fear and panic at the arrest of Jesus, which had led him to deny that he knew Jesus three times. And that led to despair until he was restored by Jesus. He'd faced doubts in his faith when Jesus called him to get out of the boat and walk on water, which he did, but then he took his eyes off Jesus and began to sink. And Jesus had to, had to reach out a hand to help him and save him. He'd faced disunity and division in a quarrel with the Apostle Paul that's mentioned in the book of Galatians about eating traditions and the law. That must have hurt him. And Jesus had actually said to him in Luke chapter 22, Satan, that is the devil, has asked to sift you as wheat, but I have prayed for you, Simon Peter, that your faith may not fail. So Peter knew what he was talking about when it came to facing the challenges and attacks on our faith. When it came to fiery trials, he'd experienced them. He knew the devil was real, like a lion, but that Jesus was ultimately in control with all power, the lion of the tribe of Judah, as well as the lamb who takes away the sins of the world. That's what we were singing about earlier in our worship time. So now in this letter, he's summarising and teaching us how to respond to the attacks and challenges that are stirred up by our enemy, the devil. And there are three keys or tools that Peter highlights here to show us how to respond. Firstly, with humility, then by resisting, and then by standing firm. He says we are to clothe ourselves with humility, all of us, and humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God, and we will be exalted and given grace at the time of need. And the idea that Peter is using there is of tying on a robe of humility, of wearing humility, of putting on clothes of humility before others and before God, so that humility, being humble, becomes a characteristic of who we are. So people know that those Christians, they are the humble people. It doesn't mean we're weak people or people who don't care about things or always take a back seat. Far from it. But humble people know and are secure in who God is and who they are. 
We know that God our Father knows all things and cares for us. We know that Jesus is Lord of Lords and King of Kings over all, the true lion who has defeated the devil and death at the cross and through his own resurrection. And therefore, we cast all our anxieties on him. We know that God will work all things together for good for those who are loved by him, who love God and are called according to his purposes. We know that nothing can separate us from the love of God. Humble people recognise this and recognise who is in charge and who is God. Humble people also listen to others, learn from others and from their experiences. And humble people know that they themselves don't have all the answers, but that God does. In this Covid crisis, it's easy to be anxious about tomorrow, about what might happen, about how things will work out in life. So be humble and cast your anxiety on him. He cares for you. When challenges come, go to Jesus, the good shepherd, as we were hearing last week from Sue, and submit to his wisdom and leading. And then secondly, there is resisting. Be sober minded, clear thinking, watchful and resist the devil, Peter says. We need to resist against temptations, against fear and against doubt. James chapter 4 verse 7 says, Submit to God, resist the devil and he will flee from you. Submit to God, that's the being humble bit. Then resist. Say no to the temptation, to the fear, to the doubt. The devil will flee. You have Jesus with you, the one who conquered death, who is on your side, the lion of the tribe of Judah. Who is this devil who is just like a lion anyway? He's been defeated. When those temptations to anger, to lie, to gossip, to look at something you shouldn't, when they come, resist and call on God. The devil will flee. When the fears and doubts come, resist. You are a child of God. Jesus is with you. You are forgiven. Stir up the faith within you and resist. And then the third key is to stand firm in the grace of God. This is all about standing your ground on the truth about who God is and what he has done and who we are as Christian believers. It's what Peter was writing about, especially in the first two chapters of this letter that we looked at previously. Things like, we are born again. We have a living hope. Our faith is precious, worth more than gold. We are chosen. We are God's own treasured possession. We're free. We're called. We have our sins forgiven. We are living for righteousness. And yes, we're clothed with humility. That's who we are. As we stand in this truth, we get to be free from the power of the devil. You know, sometimes we need to speak to ourselves the truth and stand firm in the good of that. And as we come humbly before God, resisting the devil and standing firm on the truth that leads us to worship the Lord of all, to him be the dominion for ever and ever. Amen. It leads us to worship. It leads us to rejoice on the sunny days and on the cloudy, stormy days too, the days of trial, knowing that he who is in you is greater than he, that's the devil, who is in the world. That's from 1 John chapter 4, verse 4. And also that for everyone who has been born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world. Our faith, your faith, my faith overcomes. That's 1 John 5, verse 4. Our faith is an overcoming, victorious faith. If you don't know Jesus as your saviour and rescuer for yourself, then turn to him now. Repent of doing your own thing of going your own way and humble yourself before God. Say, I believe you, Jesus. I know that I accept that you love me and you died for me on the cross to pay the price for my sin, to bring forgiveness and new life. I receive you now. Come and live in me by your Holy Spirit and make me new. I follow you. And then join with us in worship. He is our rescuer. Let me just pray for us briefly. Father, I just pray for any who don't know you, that you will come to them, 
and stir them to receive you. You might just want to pray this prayer. Lord Jesus, I come to you. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for dying for me on the cross to forgive me. I, receive, I turn to you and receive you now. Please come into my life and make me new. I pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. And I pray for all of us that you will help us to be humble before you and to resist against temptation and stand firm in all the good goodness and the blessings that you have given us. Strengthen us, I pray, by your Holy Spirit. I ask in your name. Amen. Do get in contact us, with us, especially if you have uh, prayed that prayer uh, earlier and just want to talk about things, and um, then do contact us on Facebook or email uh, as, as you're able to. And uh, I want to invite you, as we uh, conclude, to perhaps either listen to or join in this, what is a new song to many of us, Rescuer, uh, that will come uh, after, this, after this video. Uh, thanks very much for listening. Hope you hope this series of teachings has been helpful to you and God bless you. Thank you.